degree 2 are called quadratic equations. They appear not only in algebra, but also in other places, such as in arithmetic or in geometry. So we need to know how to solve them really quickly. Let's jump in. A quadratic in x is a polynomial in x of degree 2. So for example, let me write fx is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 7. Here, note that the degree of this polynomial, x squared plus 3x minus 7, is 2 because this is the highest exponent. Now, when we represent this on the xy axis, we say that x is the dependent, uh, is the independent variable, x is the independent variable, and whatever the result of this polynomial will be, when we put any value for x, whatever we get, that will be fx, that is, that will be the value of this function which we'll represent on the y-axis. So we call it y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 7. Now, in general case, we can write it as y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. When we represent this, uh, the quadratic, on the xy-axis, we get a parabola. So it looks either like this green parabola or this blue parabola or red parabola or, or many other ways. Or, you know, we can even write it as uh, the parabola can even be like this or whatever. So uh, there are specific type of quadratics that are uh, linked to each one of these parabolas. For example, the green one could be, say, y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 7. Then uh, the blue one could be uh, y is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 10. And the red one could be y is equal to minus x square, say minus 2x plus 3. Whenever the coefficient of x square, like over here it is 1, is positive, then the parabola is upward opening. So it is open upwards. It keeps going on and on. It, it is opening upwards. You see? Similarly, over here also, since the coefficient of x square is positive, it is upward opening, the blue parabola. But whenever the coefficient of x square is negative, like it is minus 1 over here, then the parabola is downward opening. So it has a maximum over here, it opens downwards. Whereas these two other parabolas, they have a minimum and they open upwards. Okay, we are often said that, uh, you know, asked to solve a quadratic equation. So we could be given an equation like, for example, let's take this one x square minus 7x plus 10. And we could be given that this is equal to 0, for example. So what do they mean by solve a quadratic? We are looking for the roots over here. Recall from our earlier video, we've discussed what roots are. The roots are the values of x for which this entire thing goes to 0. So we uh, we have to find the roots of this quadratic for now what how, uh, you know we'll discuss how to exactly find the root in the upcoming slides but for now let me just write down what the roots are going to be x minus 2 and x minus 5 we can talk later how we arrive at these so this means that x can take two values 2 and 5 and for these two values, the value of this entire polynomial is going to be 0. So these roots are represented over here on the xy axis as this is the point 2, 0. And this is the point 5, 0. So the, these, these two points, this one and this one, these are the points that are the roots of the polynomial. Do understand roots of this quadratic. Now, do understand that why do they lie on the x-axis? Why do these points, this point and this point, they lie on the uh, x-axis? Because they are the roots. That is, y is 0 when uh, x takes this value. So, obviously, they're going to lie on the x-axis, right? So, whenever we solve a quadratic equation, we get the roots of that quadratic. And they are going to, those are the points where the parabola cuts the x-axis. So the roots of this red parabola are going to be this and this. Now, what about this green parabola? Well, it doesn't have any roots. It has imaginary roots. We'll discuss that also. We'll discuss what kind of equations have real roots, what kind of equations have imaginary roots, etc. going forward. 
All right. Now, uh, again, we discussed that the blue parabola and the green parabola have minima. Do we see over here? They have a minima. And then the values keep increasing. That is, there is a point where y takes its minimum value. Like for the blue parabola, it is this one. So y takes its minimum value at this point, whatever this value of y is. And otherwise, y is always greater. So for all other values of x, y will be greater. Whereas this one, this has a the red parabola, the downward opening parabola has a maxima. So there'll be a value of y, which will be the maximum value. And after that, all the values of y are going to be less than that. So where do we obtain this minima or this maxima? We obtain the, uh, that at x is equal to minus b by 2a. So when x has this value, minus b by 2a, on this point, that is where the parabola takes its lowest value over here. Uh, what are b and a? Now, these are the coefficients of x and the coefficient of x squared. Because a generic equation of uh, quadratic is this, ax squared plus bx plus c. How do we arrive at this? This we are going to look at shortly as well. Well, so y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c represents a parabola on the xy axis. When A is positive, then the parabola is upward opening. When A is negative, the parabola is downward opening. And when A is zero, well, then it's not a parabola at all, right? The x squared term becomes zero and it becomes the equation of a line. Before we learn how to find the roots of a quadratic equation, let's look at the v h formula because it will help us understand what we do and why we do it. Right? So let's say we have uh, an equation which looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, this is a general case of what a quadratic looks like is equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation. Now, let's say we are given, we know that the roots of this equation are m and n. What does this mean? When I say the roots are m and n, it means that x minus m into x minus n is equal to zero. If they are the roots, only then well, this thing has to hold, right? Because then we can say that x minus m could be 0, which means x equal to m is a possible solution. And x minus n could be 0, so x equal to n could be a possible solution. So knowing that m and n are the roots of the quadratic, we should be able to write the equation like this. We should be able to find these kind of factors. Okay, now if, let's open these up. Let's say x squared minus x m plus n plus mn is equal to 0. So in terms of the roots of the quadrant, this is how we can write the equation. Now let's compare it with this one and let's divide this entire thing by a so that the coefficient of x squared is 1 because it's 1 over here also. So let's make this one as well. So we get x squared plus b by ax plus c by a is equal to 0. All right. So now these two are equivalent. This one and this one are equivalent quadratics, which means that the, the, the coefficient of x, of course, we see the coefficient of x squared as, are the same, but the coefficient of x with the minus sign and over here, they should be equal. So what we can say is that m plus n should be equal to minus b by a. Of course, it's minus m plus n is equal to b by a, but the minus sign can be taken there. So, you know, here it is minus m plus n, just so that there is no confusion later, is equal to b by a. So we can write it as this now, m plus n is equal to minus b by a. And of course, this, the constant term, uh, should be equal to this constant term. So we can also write that mn is equal to c by a. So the VH formula tells us that the sum of the roots, which is m plus n in our case, is equal to minus b by a. And the product of the roots, which is equal to mn, is equal to c by a. So the quadratic then, since this is our quadratic, we can also write the quadratic as x squared minus sum of the roots into x 
plus product of the roots is equal to zero. Okay. This is also a quadratic equation. Then we can write it in terms of sum and product as this. Now, it will be uh, quite good in case uh, we uh, learn this sum because it would be quite useful in certain cases. So do remember that sum of the roots is given by minus b by a and product of the roots is given by c by a. Now, how can this help us in solving questions? Let's take an example to understand this. So Nova wanted to solve a quadratic. So she copied the quadratic from the book on her notebook, but make a, made a mistake in taking down the constant term and got the roots as 12 and 6. Okay, so she made a mistake in taking down the constant term. So let's say if her quadratic was ax squared plus bx, plus c is equal to 0, then this is where she made the mistake. But she noted down a and b correctly, which means that whatever roots she got, their sum would certainly would have been minus b by a and it would have been correct. So then the sum of the roots is what she got is correct, which means that the sum of the actual roots will be equal to 6 only. Then she again copied on a new page, but this time she made a mistake in taking down the coefficient of x and got the roots as minus 8 and 5. So now this is where she made the mistake. She got the coefficient of x wrong. So b was a mistake, but she got a and c correct. So she wrote down a and c correctly, which means that the product that she got of the roots that she got would be correct right? because c and a, their values were correct. So then the product of the actual roots of the actual equation would also be minus 8 into 5, which is equal to minus 40. So this means that in our actual equation, the correct one that she had to copy, the sum of the roots would be 6 and the product of the roots would be minus 40. These two values in the two instances, she got them correct. So what could be the actual quadratic equation? Then we have seen that the quadratic equation in terms of sum and product can be given as this. So the actual quadratic would be x squared minus 6x minus 40 is equal to 0. Now, why do we say what could be the actual quadratic? Because the actual quadratic could also be the one that she was given to copy could also be this, isn't it? It's just a multiple of this quadratic. And if we divide this by two, then we again get this one. Now it could be a multiple of this quadratic in lots of different ways. So that is why the question says, what could be the actual quadratic? So y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c gives us a parable on the xy axis. But when we put it equal to zero, that is, we make it ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, we get the roots of the parabola. That is the points where the parabola cuts the x-axis. And the Vs formula, it gives us the sum in the product of the roots using the coefficients of the equation, that is using a, b, and c.